Greetings, my fellow motion people. You and I tuned in to part 5 of the Crystal City tutorials. And this one is all about After Effects. We'll be comping, we'll be grading, we'll be adding some moreness to the project. So please have your textbooks ready and let's go! I'm already ahead here in After Effects and I have an empty project. And I'll start by creating a folder which I will name Assets and to it I will import the assets. So I'll grab our renders, select all of those, Command A, and just check multiple sequences right down there and hit return. That works about every other time. So I'll just drag the main pass, the beauty pass, into a new comp which I'll then name zero main because that's our main comp and calling it zero means it's always at the top of the project. Next up I'll create the depth of field. After all we did use the RPF format for a reason. So I'll duplicate the beauty pass and pre-comp the copy. Shift command C and name that just depth. And as soon as I say OK I'll go into that comp and on the only layer in there I will add the 3D channel extract effect, which can be found in 3D channel, 3D channel extract. And by default, that's set to extract the Z depth if your pass has one, which ours does because we use the RPF format. I'll start by changing the white point. If I set that to zero, that means that pretty much a pixel which is 100% white will be at the same Z depth as the camera itself. And the black point is basically the point which is the furthest away from the camera. And I just want to limit that so we get a nice gradient from whatever is the closest to the camera to the thing that's furthest away from the camera. And as you can see now in our main comp, the depth pass lines perfectly with our beauty pass. Next step is to create an adjustment layer to keep our depth of field on. And my plugin of preference is Frischluft Depth of Field. It's the one I prefer because it's pretty much the only one I know. Smack that return button, apply the plugin, and go into depth layer and select your newly created depth. Then you just increase the blurriness so we can see what's going on. And verily, it does become blurry. Now when we go to select our depth, we can see what it's going to look like. And it looks alright, could do with a bit more blurriness though like so, so we get this nice gradient and this nice shallow depth of field. I'll probably keep the depth somewhere in the center of this cluster and then move on with some further tweaks like the iris, which I want to have six sides like it might do in a real camera. And then I also want to turn down the rounding a bit so that we get slightly sharper edges. You can't tell much difference in a scene like this, but in a darker scene it definitely has a bigger effect. Now I'll change the X to Y aspect as well. I usually set it to about negative 3, and a negative value is going to stretch the blur vertically, making it look like it was kind of shot on anamorphic. Now let's keyframe the focal point to make sure that the point we want in focus stays in focus throughout the whole 10 seconds. Set a keyframe at the beginning, move to the end, and then just select a new point. Uh, somewhere up there is probably good. If anything, I think this might be a bit too blurry, so I'll actually go back and set a keyframe at the beginning, actually. Set a keyframe at the start for the uh, radius of the blur, and then go somewhere to the middle and just tone it down a little bit. Just enough for us to get back some details in these foreground crystals and still keep the particles a bit blurry. And speaking of the particles, let's boost the highlights of those. Go into highlight selection and just turn that on. And I want to change the, uh, the threshold for it as well. I'll just turn that down a bit and you can see how we kind of give those highlights a bit of a boost. Let's actually grab a snapshot so we can compare and disable. And now you can see what it looks like with and without. And just, just a little bit extra on top for the highlights. To keep things tidy, let's name this adjustment layer DOF for depth of field. Now, what would any motion piece be without some glow? Let's duplicate the beauty pass. And then we can use our rendered object buffer to just add glow to the crystals. So this is what the object buffer looks like, just a black and white mat. And we can use that as a luminance 
matte or an inverted luminous matte. And this gives us just the crystals and the trails without the background. Now it's about time for another pre-comp. Shift Command C with those two together and name that crystal with an S because they're still plural. And now I get to apply one of my favorite effects for the past few months, and that is the extract effect. You can find it under keying extract. And this is basically a luma key, but I think the interface is a whole lot better and it offers better smoothing options. Mostly I use it just to select highlights, but you can also use it to select any specific luminance range, be it midtones or shadows. But let's go for just the highlights for our glow. So just clip it off right near the top and then smooth it out a bit. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Now I'll just set that layer to screen and then we can add everyone's favorite effect, the fast blur. Yay! And then just blur out our highlights to give that nice glow. Always remember to repeat the edges. Right, so I'm going to hit T and bring up the opacity here, and then I'm going to turn that down so it doesn't look as fuzzy. Now I want a bit of a tighter glow, so let's duplicate this first one. And just turn down the blur and really limit it to the uppermost highlights here. And then I think I might want to just bring that up a little bit in, uh, in the opacity. And as you can see, we just get that extra boost in the highlights. It's uh, all about the little things. All right, now that we're pretty much done with that, uh, it's, it's probably time to clean up our act a bit. Let's just go and rename these so that they're neat and tidy. And just name these negative one because they feed into zero. And then I'll go and uh, drag the main comp into a new comp and I'll name that CC for a color correction. I could name it CG for color grading, but that might get confusing. To start off, let's make another glow. I'll just duplicate this and add the extract effect again. Love that effect. So I'll limit this to the highlights, but I want a bigger range this time. Something like that. And then our, our favorite effect, the fast blur. And really blur that out. So it's just like a, an overall haze on the entire scene. And I'll actually set this to lighten so I don't blow out the highlights and then really turn the opacity down. So now we get just that extra bit of light in the low lights. And I'll also just have a look through um, to see that it's not too bright at some point. And it looks pretty good. Time to tweak some colors, I think. So let's reuse our adjustment layer from before, saving the environment by recycling. And to that, I want to apply a color balance. Super simple effect that I'll just use to give it sort of a look in the colors. I want it slightly bluer in the shadows. So let's bring that up and maybe a bit less, uh, less green. I'm giving it sort of this purple look that's quite nice. In the highlights, I want to bring out the warmth, so turn up the red and turn up the green a little bit there. For the midtones, I'll bring up the red as well and then bring up the blue so we get that purple colour in there as well. So now we're left with this, a kind of overall warm look with the sky still quite blue and these little particles are, are really quite red. So nice contrast. And keeping things tidy, I'll name this Color Balance. We can just look at the difference between original and then the graded, and it's quite a big difference. I'll actually change that to just color so it doesn't change the lightness of it. So let's recycle this adjustment layer again. I'll duplicate it, set that one to normal, and delete the color balance from it. Name the layer Levels. Because on here I'll uh, apply some levels later. I think first I want I want a bit more color contrast. So I'll, I'll I'll turn down the opacity first, and then I'll duplicate the layer and set the transfer mode to normal for that one. So now we get even more color in there. Let's let's apply our levels to our levels adjustment. It only makes sense, doesn't it? 
with this I'm gonna crush the white quite hard and increase the contrast a bit, just tug on the gamma. When I've got this nice and contrasty, I will then turn down uh, turn down the opacity for the whole layer just to make sure that we don't clip out any colours or expose anything. So then we get this higher contrast look without blowing out the highlights and without crushing the shadows. Just something a bit balanced in between. And I think I look starting to be uh, finished now. As a final step, let's add something I like to call moreness. Shout out to my homie Flip for coining that term. Moreness is basically an extra layer on top, which ruins the image and, as a consequence, makes it look better. So I'll drag the color correction into new comp and name this one Moreness. For a first level of Moreness, I will uh, first off recycle our adjustment layer again, turn that to an adjustment layer. On that, I will use a Lux from the uh, Red Giant color suite, with which I will create chromatic aberration. And I'll jump in to edit those and hover to the right under a lens. I will grab, I'll grab the chromatic aberration effect, and I basically only tweak the red, cyan, blue, yellow channels to give that realistic spectral look. Set the red one to minus 0.5 and the uh, blue one to plus 0.5. I think that'll be enough for, uh, for this project. And then I'll hit finish, and as you can see, we get some uh, nice chromatic aberration around these high contrast areas. Basically just adding color in the entire image, even if it was just black and white, this, this would breathe some color into it. And keeping things tidy, I'll name that Chromab. Again, I'll reuse this adjustment layer and remove the looks and instead I'll rename this one to grain for now I will add grain to it so I'll search for grain and use the add grain effect to surprise surprise add grain set that to final immediately and then just go for a preset here either one will do I'll just go for this one and turn down the intensity a bit it's a bit too intense and I'm afraid we're uh, approaching the end of this Crystal City tutorial now. Let me just uh, do a quick preview. Making sure we didn't miss anything, which I don't think we did. I'm glad to see that you stuck around to the end of the Crystal City tutorials. It's been uh, quite the journey, hasn't it? Do you remember that time when we set up the object buffer? Well, those were the days, weren't they? Let's add this to the render queue, and I'll save this out as a ProRes, but low quality, high quality ProRes. And now I'll save it somewhere as something as you do. Then I'll just hit render and uh, let nature take its course. And I will see you on the other side when we see the final thing. So I guess this is it, my friend. This is the end. Please uh, hand in your assignment at the end of the week, and um, no, but seriously, if you do create something based off of this, I'd, I'd love to see it. You could just post a link in the comments here, or you could post it to my Facebook page, uh, send a tweet, or maybe simply send the individual uh, frames printed in boxes to my address. Either one of those is fine. Also, if you have uh, other questions, anything you'd like to learn in terms of motion, just uh, just let me know. But for now, thank you for your time, and uh, until next time, you know what I'm going to say, y you know it, stay in motion. <laughs> <laughs>